Hey guys, so today I thought it might be kind of fun since we are, the world it seems like is celebrating the Platinum Jubilee of Queen Elizabeth II, I thought it might be kind of fun to see how exactly Queen Elizabeth II is connected back to some of the monarchs of England and the United Kingdom from centuries past. So I'm going to try to, in the next 15 minutes, get through this in as painless and <laughs> uh, clear a way as possible. I'm not going to be discussing every monarch of Great Britain, but instead will simply be going in a direct paternal, or in some cases maternal line. So we'll start with Queen Elizabeth's father, and it'll simply be parent to parent to parent, and I will show how Queen Elizabeth II is indeed a direct descendant of the legendary King Alfred the Great. So, so Queen Elizabeth II, as many of you know, was, well, she is our current Queen of the United Kingdom. She was born April 21st, 1926, and she became Queen after the passing of her father, King George VI. Um, she's, of course, still reigning today, as we just recently celebrated her 70th year reigning, the longest in British history and one of the longest in world history. Uh, her father, King George VI, um, was not intended, I mean, he was not born to be king. He was born a second son, but as many people may know, his older brother, King Edward VIII, abdicated after less than a year of being king in order to marry the American divorcee, Wallace Simpson. So had that not have been the case, we would never have had Queen Elizabeth II or the current royal family that we know today. Uh, so he was the father of Queen Elizabeth II. I have some details here about when he was born, died, and in the bottom right you see the years that he reigned. His father, and this is the grandfather of Queen Elizabeth II, was King George V, who was also not the eldest son, but was indeed the second son of King Edward VII. But as his older brother died before becoming king, King George V became king of the United Kingdom and was at the time emperor of India. Now we get on to King Edward VII, who is the great-grandfather of Queen Elizabeth. And King Edward VII was, prior to Prince Charles, the longest-serving Prince of Wales in British history. Prince of Wales, if you're not familiar, is the title usually assigned to the heir to the British throne, if that heir is a male. His mother, the monarch, was Queen Victoria, and she is the great-great-grandmother of Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, she, prior to Queen Elizabeth II, was the longest reigning British monarch of all time, with an impressive reign from June 20th, 1837, all the way through January 22nd, 1901. And what's interesting is her father, who is this gentleman right here, Edward Duke of Kent, or Prince Edward Duke of Kent, rather, was never king. He was the fourth son of King George III, and he had two of his older brothers who lived long enough to become king, George IV and William IV. However, despite, of course, having consorts, uh, queens, and fathering, well, at least in King George IV's case, well over a dozen children, none of these children he fathered were actually with his wife, so these children were illegitimate and therefore not eligible to inherit the throne. So, after the passing of King William IV and the British were looking for their next monarch, it would have passed to King, uh, Prince Edward's younger brother, but seeing as how Prince Edward himself had passed, but had indeed uh, fathered a legitimate daughter who became Queen Victoria, that made Queen Victoria the next in line. His father uh, is King George III, or was King George III, who reigned, uh, actually is the longest reigning male British monarch of all time, um, and he is the Queen's fourth great-grandfather, and he became king after the passing of, um, of his grandfather, King George II. His father, Prince Frederick, who was Prince of Wales, died prematurely and so never became king. Um, so his father, King George II, was born June 11, 1727, and um, was the and, and what and was the current queen's sixth great grandfather. I'm just keeping on going back with the Georges, and now we get back to King George the first. And um, what's interesting about King George the first, and we'll see this in just a moment here, is that King George the first was from a house 
uh, house in this case, not referring to a physical building, but to pretty much the surname associated with a royal family. So he was from the House of Hanover, and um, he was a German, and you might think had really no right to inherit the British throne. However, due to some uh, inheritance rules regarding Protestantism and a few other things, this actually did indeed make King George I the uh, rightful heir to the British throne. And uh, you can see here, he became king after the passing of his mother's first cousin, Queen Anne, who was the last of the Stuart monarchs. So his mother, Sophia of Hanover, was a first cousin of Queen Anne and a granddaughter of King James I, first slash six, and we'll get into what the first slash six is in reference to. Her mother, Elizabeth Stuart, who I'm quick to sometimes think I'm looking at a, a portrait of Queen Elizabeth I, but uh, that's a different woman. Uh, that's Elizabeth Tudor, not Elizabeth Stuart. But uh, she was the daughter of King James I slash six. And finally, you get to this James <laughs> six slash first or first slash six. Now, now, the reason why he has this rather unique um, assignment of numbers is because King James was King James the sixth of Scotland. However, he was King James the first of England. And the sort of predecessor to the modern day United Kingdom was simply Great Britain. And the the union of England and Scotland happened uh, as a result of the reign of James. And the reason he was selected to be monarch uh, is because the Tudors uh, eventually went extinct. Uh, Queen Elizabeth I, who I just mentioned, um, she never had any children. She was known as the Virgin Queen. And so when she passed, they had to find the next person to become the monarch of England. And in this case, they borrowed the monarch from Scotland, which is what set the precedent for the personal union between the two countries. Now, how was James VI in line to become the monarch of England? Well, it's because his mother, Mary Queen of Scots, was Queen of Scotland in her own right. Uh, she was the daughter of King James V uh, of Scotland. And King James V was the son of King James IV of Scotland and his wife, Margaret Tudor. Margaret Tudor was the sister of King Henry VIII and was, of course, the daughter, and she was the Queen Consort of Scotland, being married to King James IV of Scotland. And Margaret Tudor was the daughter of King Henry VII. So we've now officially gotten back to the English monarchs, um, and we're back to the Tudors. Now, King Henry VII is an interesting uh, figure in British history because he is one of two kings whose right to become king was not based on inheritance, but rather through conquest. And King Henry VII was... Now, he married um, Elizabeth of York, and both Elizabeth of York and King Henry VII were both descendants in their own rights of King Edward III. However, just for simplicity's sake, I will show you the connection bet between King Henry VII and King Edward III. Um, this was not the primary claim he used to justify his, to justify his right to the throne. It was rather his justification was a result of his conquest and his ability to... Um, uh, vanquish the competing lines because King Edward III had numerous sons and these numerous lines ended up fighting each other over the throne in the War of the Roses that you may have heard of. So his mother was a woman called Lady Margaret Beaufort. She was the great-great-granddaughter of King Edward III. Her father, John Beaufort, first Duke, first Duke of Somerset, was the great-grandson of King Edward III, and uh, I do apologize as we get further back through the centuries, the portraits become <laughs> become a little bit less detailed or a little bit less refined. Her fa now his father, John Beaufort, the first Earl of Somerset, was a grandson of King Edward III, and his father, John of Gaunt, was the third son of King Edward III, a very powerful and wealthy man in his own right. Um, he was born March 6th, 1340, and he's the 18th great-grandfather of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Now, his father, of course, was King Edward III, and uh, King Edward III has a rather interesting story and a certain, a very interesting way he became king. So you'll notice that on my second bulletin point, I don't say that he became king after his father, King Edward II, died, because actually, while his father did, of course, end up passing, 
King Edward III, while still a boy, was made king by his mother, uh, Isabella of France, who had the nickname the She-Wolf of France. And basically, um, the short of it is King Edward III's mother, the Queen, uh, Queen Isabel, I believe it was Isabella or Isabella, wasn't too happy with how her husband was ruling, so effectively got him removed from power so that their young son, King Edward III, could come to the throne. So um, that happened in uh, January. He was brought to the throne January 25th, 1327. His father, King Edward II, would not pass until September 21st, 1327. Uh, so this is King Edward II, father of King Edward III. Uh, he, of course, became king after his father. Now we're back to the first Edward, kind of. <laughs> king Edward I, um, who was born June 17th, 1239, and became king after the passing of his father, King Henry III. Uh, so we're back to Henry III who became king after the passing of his father, King John. And uh, I, I know I had mentioned earlier that this line was not going to cover all of the kings, uh, or even queens for that matter, of England, and that is due to the fact that not all of them are direct descendants of Queen Elizabeth. However, and this is an example, King John uh, became king not after the passing of his father, but after the passing of his brother, King Richard the Lionheart, the famous crusader king. Uh, King John was the son of King Henry II, born March 5th, 1133. And once again, there's sort of an interesting story here. King Henry II uh, was the son of Empress Matilda. However, Empress Matilda, um, who was actually made heir to the throne by her father, King Henry I, never was able to realize that inheritance because many of her supporters abandoned her for being a woman and rallied behind her cousin, King Stephen. And uh, upon the uh, deathbed of King Stephen, he agreed to allow Empress Matilda's son, King Henry II, to be his heir. So that is how that went. She is the 25th great-grandmother of Queen Elizabeth. Now, I know I mentioned at the beginning that I was going to show the connection between Queen Elizabeth II and King Alfred the Great. I will, but I'll go ahead, before I do that, I'll go ahead and show the connection back to William the Conqueror, who you almost m maybe, have uh, maybe have heard of. So Empress Matilda uh, was the daughter of King Henry I. King Henry I was the second son of William the Conqueror and uh, succeeded to the throne after the death of his older brother William II, some say under rather suspicious circumstances. And finally we get back to William the Conqueror who was Queen Elizabeth's 27th great-grandfather, became king through conquest. He was a Norman uh, duke, uh, which Normandy is, was a northern, uh, it was his own northern province of France. And he came, uh, and conquered England under the claim that the last Saxon king, Harold Godwin, or I'm sorry, not Harold Godwinson, uh, King Edward the Confessor had promised him the throne. However, there were also several other folks who claimed the same thing, so it complicated matters a little bit. William the Conqueror, for those who might be a fan of the show Vikings or The Last Kingdom, is in fact a great-great-grandson of the real-life Viking Rollo, who, if you know, having watched the show, was made Count uh, of Normandy, which later became the Dukedom uh, of Normandy. So Queen Elizabeth and all her folks are indeed a direct descendant of the great berserker Viking Rollo. So back to Empress Matilda for a moment. Empress Matilda was the daughter of a woman called Matilda of Scotland. Matilda of Scotland was, of course, the Queen Consort of England, having been married to King Henry I. And she was a daughter of St. Margaret of Scotland, who was born Margaret of Wessex. She was a wife of King Malcolm III of Scotland, so that's another link back to the kings of Scotland. Her father, King Edward the Exile, was a Saxon king, and the next sequence of kings were all constantly in battle with the Vikings. Uh, his father, King Edmund Ironside, uh, was the son of King Aethelred the Unready, who was the son of King Edgar the Peaceful, who was the son of King Edmund I who was the son of King Edward the Elder. Finally, we arrive at King Alfred the Great, who is the 34th great-grandfather of Queen Elizabeth II, reigning from April 871 to October 899. And although there are ancestors beyond King Alfred the Great, the records become rather hazy, and it is, for the most part, agreed that King Alfred, with his great successes over the Vikings and his adoption of English law, was the true first king of the English. So thank you for watching.